Listen, Cat Williams got everything kicked off. Well, Cat didn't actually kick everything off. Cat blew it up, okay? Over there, Club Shay Shay, it literally has been going down. But Cat Williams came in and raised the bar so high for what goes down in Club Shay Shay. And we all do when we heard the advertisement that Monique was coming to Club Shay Shay, we knew it was going to be off the chain. And did she disappoint? I don't think so. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on to this video and welcome to Spill It Boy TV with Kitchen Table Talk Live with Spill It Boy TV. Listen, I got a lot to talk about and I don't want to be here all night because it was a lot. Club Shay Shay, uh, Shannon Sharp brought Monique over to Club Shay Shay and this is what I believe is just part one of this. So I'm led to believe that there's actually more that was said in her time over at Shannon Sharp's place. But the first video release is three hours long. It's three hours long. And listen, it was worth every minute. It was worth every minute. I wasn't so sure because I didn't know how 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 was this going to go? Because we, you know, we've heard the Monique story. We've lived the Monique story. We know Netflix, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry. Okay, now what? We know. We know, we know, we know. And that was, I think, most people's attitude toward it. It's like we all we've heard it all before. Now what? Now what? You all see this. This is what we were expecting. Fights about Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, Lee Daniels. The board has filled up. The goalposts have been shifted. Nope. We talking about Tiffany Haddish. We talking about D.L. Hughley, Jess Hilarious, The Breakfast Club before Jess Hilarious. It Things kind of went left and right, and it, it's been a whole swerving match. And I've been enjoying every last minute. Like I said, Monique hit Club Shay Shay and then the beef was served raw. Sure was. I mean, she laid out a lot of things. She called out a lot of names. I expected all that. But what went forward and where the fallouts were, you know, it's always the next day. It's always the next day, especially when you get to talk about beef. It's always after when the actual video that everybody knows about happens, it's all the videos that come afterwards is where all the good tea and the good beefing goes on. And this didn't disappoint. It didn't disappoint at all. So we're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up quickly. I'm not going to keep you all night because I'm not doing a three-hour video about a three-hour video. I'm not doing that. Not today. <laughs> okay? So listen. Let's talk Club Shay Shay and Monique, shall we? So let me get on this screen with you all. You know I don't do this from behind the screen. My folks don't play that. They don't even allow it. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Kitchen Table Talk Live with Spiller Boy TV. Sometimes I wish I could just stay behind the screen and just run my mouth, but my folks will send me nasty grams and nasty mails and hate mail. So here I am. Here I am. But so, like I said, we were expecting to see, you know, her go off about the Tyler Perry stuff and the Oprah Winfrey stuff. Mostly her and Lee Daniels have already made up. So I wasn't really worried about her and Lee too much, but I was expecting the, the same old dance, Netflix, you know, all that. No, no, she talked about all that, but really briefly. She talked about that. Um, the Taraji P. Henson. I mean, there was names being thrown out. Taraji P. Henson. I said, okay. She literally, let's just start here with the best. She 
basically her thing was, yeah, I feel sorry for Taraji. I feel sorry for her. But where was the outrage whenever it was going on with me? Why is it received so much better? You know, all of the things about the mistreatment, about the payments and all of that stuff. Why is it so much more interesting when it's her rather than me? And she threw it out there. She said, because see, I'm strong. I'm paraphrasing, but this is how I got it. Listen, it wasn't, this wasn't, there was times in here that I felt bad for Monique. And there was times in here where I was like, girl, you better say it. And there was times in there where I was like, no, nah, Monique, you just being a bitch. You know, it, that's my idea of a good interview. Take me on a roller coaster ride. Why don't you? Pull some emotion out of me. I don't want to hear the same old stuff out of her. Come on, tell me what's going on. And there's a lot of time that's gone by. So yeah, let's talk about it. What's going on today? We heard what happened before. What's going on today? Baby, unapologetically, unapologetically, I'm strong. She came across broken and weak. I'm a black woman and y'all like y'all black women broken and weak. And that's why people jumped up in arms and there was outrage when Taraji said what she said, all she said was the same things that I had been saying, but she was broken and she came across weak. I was like, and she ain't had no man. I said, oh, <laughs> I said, this was in the beginning. This was literally in the beginning. I said, oh, this, this interview going to be a goddamn mess. Broken, weak, and manless. I said, oh, 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 oh. I said, now, Miss Monique, Miss Mary Marcel. Hello, my love. Hello, my love. <laughs> How are you? Welcome to the kitchen table. We've done this before. We've been at the kitchen table before. <laughs> Mwah! <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Monique, okay, I get it. I get it. And this the truth. There is truth behind that. They like our women broken and crying and all of that. But the truth of the matter is our women are the backbone of our community. Our women don't cry and run in corners and hide and be broken. That's not the essence of a black woman. So I get it. I get it. The outrage doesn't come very often like that because again, our women are about about it. They're not for all that crying and laying down and you letting you walk on. They are, that's not the essence of a black woman. Not any black women that I've ever been raised up underneath or loved or loved on or followed behind or looked up to. I'm used to strong black women. And listen, it is what it is. That's what I know. That's what I've been surrounded by. And that's all I'll really accept. That's all I'll really accept. That's just it. So I get it. I do. I agree with what she said. But, you know, delivery is the thing. Sometimes you say things, you be like, oh, that cut. You know, that cut. But it is what it is. That's one thing I've always liked about Monique. Monique is going to come out and say what Monique's going to say. Now, I'll give her that. And I'm going to tell y'all, you know, we've all had, all of us on social media have had time where we have just been so sick of Sydney. And we blame Sydney. I'm guilty. There's been times when I'll be like, you know what? I am about sick of Sydney, child. And it just, you know, but through this last two days, made me look a little differently at the whole, whole her and Sydney thing. I just kind of wish that she never shared any of their intimate stuff. Because I think we got caught a lot in the intimate stuff and the way they, they 
reference each other, her calling him daddy and and different things like that to the point where it always kind of felt like he was like leading her, not so much of him supporting her. I don't know why, and maybe it's just me, but in this instance, it seems as though I've been able to hear her more about what she says about what her husband and her husband's support does for her personally. I don't know if maybe there's been some changes with me because again, as the years have been going on, you know, I've changed, I've grown in some spots too. So maybe that's why it hit different with me now. And you know, I'll be the first to say it. I ain't got no problem with it saying, yeah, I feel a little differently. You know what I mean? But for some reason, his presence in this situation didn't feel manipulative. It didn't feel as though we were hearing Sydney's voice through Monique, it felt like Monique was doing what Monique wanted to do, and Sydney was back at Monique. And maybe it's the fact that Sydney wasn't sitting there in the interview with her. He's their manager. Managers don't sit with stars. You'd never know if I had a manager or not, because I would never have them sitting on with me, because you don't need to know that. If you're not writing a check, you don't need to know whether I have a manager or not unless you're trying to do some type of business. So I don't know. So maybe that was it. And and I just loved the whole dynamic. What's up, Ricky? I love the dynamic of her sitting with Shannon Sharp. It just, it, it felt comfortable. She looked good. You know, she was Monique. She didn't feel like she was putting on, oh my God, one of my cousins. Hello, cousin. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> um, it 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 felt it felt good, and they're all cousins, married too. But th yeah, there's some of my family. You know, that's uh, see, look, things y'all don't need to know and don't know about me. People swear I don't have any family. I keep telling them I'm from a huge family of people and sometimes they do hang around and you all just don't know who they are which is good because if you get out of line bing bang boom honey that's it you will never see it coming anyway <laughs> anyhow but it just felt good the whole thing sitting there getting a drink and just spilling it it's like what i do this show kitchen table talk i sit here and unapologetically give you me i say what i want how I want, when I want, and if you don't like it, all you got to do is click off. And trust me, if you get mad at me and you click off on me, guess what? I'm the bitch that rents a space in your head. So you'll still hear me in your dreams, the fact that you didn't like it. You'll always come back. And that's just how that kind of works. <laughs> Lisa, hi, baby. <laughs> okay, so... I told you, it's the family, they all falling out, out of the clouds. It, anyway, I love it. So here's the thing. So that was that. Um, and then she said, the last thing we said about the soul Taraji piece, she said, if we stop getting in our, our emotions, we would go, we would be so far. Now that kind of, that hurt Monique. I ain't like that. I didn't like that because again, like I said, black, a black woman is strong. Most times you don't see our women just broken and, you know, as you said, broken and weak. But everybody don't approach everything the same way. So I didn't actually get that Taraji was weak. Broken, yes. Disappointed, yes. Let down in the career that she chose. Because when you choose a career, especially when it's in the arts, and things don't go the way you think they should go. It hurts. It hurts. And only another person with talents like that could actually really relate. But when it's something that's creative like that, you literally put so much of you personally into it. And if it doesn't work out, it hurts. So that's what I got from Taraji. I didn't get weak from Taraji. I, I I just didn't. I didn't get that. So, I mean, I don't agree with that. I thought that last little comment 
was a little snarky. Very Monique, you know, let's see, who's this? Who did Sydney manage before he was her daddy? Then we have an open, have an open marriage so that you can sleep with another woman. All that pimp talk. See, and that's the thing, just John, that I wish that we didn't know any of that. I just wish we didn't know any of that because we didn't need to know that. We didn't need to know that. I don't care who Sydney sleeps with. And again, marriages, marriages, my marriage won't look like your, naturally, my marriage won't look like your marriage because if I marry, I'm not going to marry a heterosexual because I'm not heterosexual. So most of my people who follow me are heterosexual. Most of our people who follow me are heterosexual. Hell no, my marriage is not going to look like your marriage. You know what I mean? So there's just some things you just don't need to know. And when you know it, it starts to make you judge on everything else. And I think that's what we kind of have done with her and Sydney. I don't think we even heard a lot of the issues until really now. We just was seeing... What they had going on, we was like, their lifestyle is ridiculous. Wasn't even none of our goddamn business. It wasn't none of our business. Now, I ain't never really go in like that because, again, I am homosexual. My life, my lifestyle and the way I live is a bit different, you know, than others. So do I really stand in judgment of how people live? Not really, not too much. I'd be like, you know, do you? Do you? But she was what I would say overshare. I think she was oversharing and I think it was getting in the way of the message a lot of times. And a lot of times her messages come across as self, they're very self-serving. Like the whole thing of us telling us to go and boycott Netflix, Miss Thing, I'm not, and I still stand on that. I, I'm, not, I'm not boycotting Netflix, girl. I'm going to click it on and I'm going to watch my stuff. Now, I, I, you got my full support. Raw, raw, sis, kumba, girl, fight, 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 fight. But why I got to sit over here and can't watch my stuff? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I don't know about all that. That was a lot. That was a bit self-serving. Because when you jump, when you got things straightened out and you was on Netflix, you wanted us to go all go back to Netflix. That kind of like that, you know, I ain't into that. I ain't into that. That's just like, I'm not going to hate the next door neighbor because you hate the next door neighbor. If the next door neighbor don't do nothing to me, then, you know, girl, I, I, it is what it is. Handle that. So I couldn't get into that. But anyway, she mentioned Al Sharpton. I said that was that, that was I, I had heard a little bit of that before. But I thought real jive how she said Al Sharpton literally was like, yeah, I got your back. And then all of a sudden. He basically was bought like for free plane for free private plane rides by Tyler Perry. I was like, wow, seriously? So some of those little stories, those kind of cut and hit hard. I said, wow. That's what I'm saying. I was kind of like listening and I heard bits and pieces of things. This interview being so long and being so open, she was able to really tell the story the way, you know, tell her version of the story. So I'm like, okay, I, I, I get it. Hello, Pat. Um, the Al Sharpton thing I thought was horrible. Stephanie Mills, you know, I had no problem. I love Stephanie, but it just kind of says even people that we have who are the voice of the community. Because Stephanie Mills, if if you don't know, you've been hiding under a rock. Stephanie Mills is soul sister number one. Like seriously, Black History Month. Trust me, Stephanie Mills's name should come up many more times than just for her singing, you know, never knew love like that. You know, mm -mm. Stephanie Mills is soul sister number one, for real. She is black, black, blackity black, unapologetically. She really, really is. I love her. But yeah, Stephanie Mills is about that business. So when she mentioned her, it was still all respect, but it was just saying how, um, even with Stephanie Mills, Tyler Perry was given very much of, 
I really don't want to do it, but be as those coming from Stephanie, I'll meet with Mo, with Monique uh, without her husband, and she needs to make an apology to me and Oprah. Tyler, if you don't go sit down, if you don't go sit down, that that was boy, get out of here, get out of here. And why does she have to meet with you without her husband? I don't think she should meet with anybody without her husband. I don't. And not just the fact he's her manager, but first he's her husband. And no matter what y'all friendship, you're a man. You're a man. Y'all got an issue. It's an issue. You know, no, I mean, I, I'm sure, sure she's not afraid like you're going to beat her up or anything like that. But just in general, if you're of male descent, and you're having any type of an issue with a woman who actually has a husband, why would you think that you are not going to have, if there's an issue, the issue is with the man, with the husband and the wife, you know, at any time it's be with the man and the woman. That's, they are a, a group. It is what it is. So that just seemed weird. And the fact that you wanted to meet without her, it kind of felt as though you felt like you could manipulate her, but you don't think you could do it when he's around. So that didn't sit really, really well with me. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. It felt real snakish. It felt like some of that shitty, right? That's I said it. I said it. And that's any kind of man. I don't care what kind of man you are. If you have a problem with a woman who has a spouse, when you sit down to clear up said problem, be prepared to sit down with them and their spouse. That's the way it should be. Women, if you're going to meet up with a man, regardless of what type of man it is, and you have a spouse and you go and you're not clearing up the problem and he ain't there with you, your spouse ain't shit. I said it. And it ain't always about physical and it ain't always about being scared. Just I'm a woman with a husband. That's 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 they they come together just like a woman with her children. You can't date a woman and don't you date her and the children. I can't date mommy and act like I don't know you. Like that just don't it doesn't work. I didn't like that. I didn't care for that. Um, I really didn't care for that. I had no, you know, still love you, Tyler, but out of order, out of order period. Kevin Hart made my heart drop because I love Kevin Hart. I do. I've always liked Kevin Hart. I just think he's just cute with his little self and and I just like Kevin and funny and all of that. Kevin, trash. Pure trash. This whole thing of you're going to, you, like you did what you did, you couldn't really get resolved, so you're going to use her, your name because they were already losing money and everything like that. And you're going to get behind her and help her to do whatever it is she needs to do. So she keep on working. Y'all got something going together. Talking about they was going to do a talk show. Look, boom, that's that work. We already know she could do a talk show and make it work. You've done it before. You're all the way there and you're behind them. And then you turn around and a phone call. This, I didn't like this. The performer side of me was Boiling. Do you understand me? When they said that the manager, they had everything set up. And then the manager calls the production company and says, Kevin's out. Kevin don't want nothing to do with Monique at all. She's like, what? She calls Kevin. Kevin says, oh, this is a miscommunication. Let me take care of everything. I'll get right back with you, sis. And she said, two weeks went by. She heard nothing. And then literally, just ain't heard from him since. Now, it's been years. Haven't heard from him since. Kevin, really? Trash. Trash. And I heard all the part before that where she said, you know, when her money was messed up, Kevin actually wrote her a check and all that. I get it. I mean, I get it. If the powers that be, we know how Hollywood works. If the powers that be say, listen, you put your brand up next to her brand, we pull it out. But you didn't think enough of her to say, listen, sis, 
I know I said I would support you, but me supporting you is going to cut my my underline and I got family and children. She would have understood that. And even if she didn't, even if she didn't, you could look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know, I was honest. You know, I, I can't throw me under the bus because you under the bus. Now, I can't do that. Just like I said, I'm in support of what you you want to fight Netflix. Boo, go, go to swinging. But I'm not turning my goddamn Netflix off. You know how long I've been with Netflix, girl? I was with Netflix. You remember when Netflix used to mail you DVDs? You go on, click, 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 click. This is the movie I want. And they mail them to you. And then you mail them back. That's how long I've been with Netflix. Now, you done had a tiff with Netflix. No, sis, now I'm with you. Cuss they ass out. But I ain't got off my Netflix. I ain't doing that. It ain't got to sound right. It ain't got to sound cushy. It's truth. I ain't cut my Netflix off. But that stuff right there, and then to just stop speaking. What is that? What is that? That says to me that you knew that decision to just drop out from her bothered you, and it there was some integrity not there in that, and you wasn't good with it. And that's why you ran. That's how, listen, you know people will stop speaking to you to keep from paying you back money that they owe you. That's how that felt. Petty. Real petty. I ain't like that at all. So still like Kevin, but for the record, Kevin, trash. Pure trash. I didn't like that at all. At all. That's what I told you. I went through a range of emotions in that three hours with her. Um, Oprah. I've always loved Oprah. Period. I, I'm sorry. I, I not sorry, really. I love Oprah. Always have. Oprah is that girl. Oprah is that girl. She is. She's smart. She's beautiful. She's, you know, they say whatever they want to say. I thought Oprah was was. I just thought she's beautiful in all the sizes that she's ever been in. Oprah's just Oprah. She she is definitely something to look up to. Now, do I agree with every decision that she makes? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Hell, I don't agree with every decision my mama makes. And y'all know how I feel about my mama. Okay? So Oprah ain't, ain't special like that. I don't agree with everything. But this thing right here about how now, they got an issue. And like, Oprah, are you really lessening yourself to this place where you're snatching rolls off of her? I ain't like that. That wasn't a good look. It wasn't a good look. And then you say, is that true? Is that not true? I don't know. I got a special love for Lee Daniels, but Lee Daniels was honest. He was honest. He told Monique from the door where it came to the butler, I want you, I want you to play in the butler. And Oprah, came in, had to go to Oprah, you know, because you need Oprah to open up certain doors and things for the production of the butler. You know, the, the butler is a huge production and it ba it really was Lee's moment. You know, I mean, we Precious was a moment, but the butler changed things, okay? Oprah wanted that role. But see the difference between Kevin and Lee, Lee came to her and said, sis, listen, this might be my bing, bang, boom. And I can't, I mean, I love you dearly, girl, but I can't go under the bus with you on this one. He was honest. He was honest. Thank you, make it make sense. You say Oprah is that girl who will steal your movie role. We see. I believed it. Now that I, I believed it, I didn't like it. I didn't think it was a good look. I love her dearly, but I ain't like that. Let's see. Wait a minute. James, I'm a true supporter of yours. I truly enjoy you, but Oprah is nothing but a snake. 
I have a family member that works in the industry and the stories that he has told me is appalling. Listen, and all I can do is respect that. And Adrena, first of all, you being my spot girl, I know who you is, child. I know you've been here <laughs> and I love you back. So that don't change none of that. That don't change none of that. What we got going on, we got going on. But I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't believe what your cousin is saying. Because again, I am in the business. I've been doing entertainment stuff a long time before you all knew me on some dog on YouTube. I've been somewhere with a spotlight in my face. Don't believe everything you hear. But I, I'm not going to say I don't believe that. I'm not going to say I don't believe that. Absolutely not. Diamond, I didn't like Monique's hair. It was terrible. Oh, she must have did it herself. See, here you come in here with the foolishness. Hello, Diamond. <laughs> Just the foolishness of it all. So that that little part, the stuff with Oprah, I didn't like that. Um, the stuff that she was saying was lining up to where I couldn't be like, no, Oprah ain't did that. It was lining up. You said Oprah's only concern is Gail. See, you're being messy boots. I don't understand how many more stories people can have to hear to know that Oprah Winfrey is truly not that girl. She doesn't have, doesn't have two faces. She has five. But you can't take away what she's done. You know what I mean? You can't take away, right? I get it. But you can't take away what her talent is. You, you can't. You just can't take it away. I, I get it. I get it. Personality flaws, probably a plenty. But you can't take away like who she is. You know, who she is, who she is to me. And the things that I've done and rolling behind and watching and studying. I just can't take that away. Um, let me see. You know how people be when they get rich. They toot their nose up and throw their money around. They don't care if they came from the projects. And that is the stuff that I was seeing, Rick. That, that, I'm, I said, I believed it. Like the whole, I could swoop down and just take this role. Did she really want the role? Does she not the color purple stuff? She lives and breathes that color purple stuff. I, I, that whole thing, I have no questions about that. I didn't even, I had said it to my people. I don't even want to go see the color purple, really. But first of all, I just had to do it. One, that's something I had to do for the culture. I had to do it for the culture. This is, my, this is part of my job. This is what I did. So I had to do it for the culture. I needed to see it for myself. You know, the, the color purple is part of the soundtrack of my life. You know, that's one of those big things. And my growing up, I grew up at the time that the movie, you know, I was around when the movie came out. I seen the movie when it first came out and all of that. I know the movie backwards and forwards for the most part. Um, you know, a lot of well, the good stuff, child, the good stuff. The, the lines that we laugh at that we had no business laughing at that they try to take out. I was pissed. Uh, you show is ugly. <laughs> you know, you ain't supposed to call people ugly, but shit, it was funny. It was funny. We've been laughing at that for years, and we know we should have been laughing at that. Cause what the nerve of a woman to come in your house, sleeping with your husband, and you nurse her back to health, and that hoe look you in your face and call you ugly. <laughs> but it is what it is. I love you too, Adrena. <laughs> so that whole thing, um, yeah, I, I just didn't like that. I, I didn't like that at all. I really didn't. Um, big ups to Monique for the piece where she shouted out T.S. Madison. I don't think she even realized what impact that would have because as a lot of you all know, T.S. Madison is a friend of mine. She is a personal friend and I love Maddie. And and I know, you know, I, it hurts me every time I hear people when they start this. She doesn't like black women, this, that thing and the other. Maddie's mouth gets her into trouble. She says, you know, I'm I'm saying say it. And 
I mean it, and sometimes the bullets fly and the bullets hit people that it shouldn't hit. And I get it. I get it. But when I hear people start this, she doesn't like black women and she doesn't respect black women. It really isn't true. So, and that it's just that's that's the business. That's the business. But when she said the piece in there, when she, you know, she said, Y'all don't even know the fights that she has behind the scenes. And trust me when I tell you, y'all don't. Y'all don't, y'all have no clue. Y'all have no clue at how Maddie goes to bat a lot of times or the stuff that y'all can't see. And my platform is no, you know, I can say it over and over. My platform is nowhere near as big as Monique worldwide. You understand? But when she said that, it was kind of like a stamp, you know, because she didn't have to. She didn't even have to bring it up. She could have just breezed right over it. She could have breezed right over it. And you know how she screams about Black woman, Black people, the community, that whole thing. She could have just breezed right over it. She really could. And while I'm doing that, we're going to segue right into another Black woman who um, I think Monique just gave her a stamp of approval that she needed, that she didn't know she needed. And that is just hilarious. Just hilarious. We're going to talk about that in a minute. I'm going to get to that. But when she stamped just hilarious with that breakfast club and how she's actually needed there and how they made the proper they made the proper um, decision by hiring her as the new hostess for Breakfast Club. That was like the stamp of approval that who even knew that Jess even needed, but it just fit. And I think it worked. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's talk about, we got all that stuff out of the way. This is all the stuff that we kind of knew about. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to say it 900 times. Maddie loves black women, period. Okay? Do you not going to always agree with what come out of her mouth? I don't agree with what come out of her mouth all the time. That's my sister. There's many times when she says stuff and I'll be like, oh, shit, man. <laughs> As it's coming out of her mouth. But, you know, it is what it is. And my views are not even always the same. Because remember, we're different. She's trans. I'm not. I'm a drag queen. She is a trans woman. We are very different. I, and we're like part of a community, but we're in separate communities within that same umbrella of that LGBTQIA. Y'all don't need to know all that. But sometimes drag queens, butch queens, and trans women, we do not see eye to eye. So a lot of times Maddie will say things, and I don't agree with it either. I'll be like, well, shut up. You know, <laughs> it just is what it is. Just trust me when I tell you, she really, it's not, she, she does love black women. Her mama's a black woman, just like mine. So let's move on to this. Tiffany Haddish. Now, Miss Tiffany, <laughs> this is where I say, while my title is what it is, that the beef was served raw, Tiffany Haddish. I don't know what possessed Tiffany Haddish to swing on Monique, but she swung on her, period. There was an interview to some, something that she had done done for GQ magazine, and Monique, did she used this, use this time to address that where Tiffany swung on her and basically said, you know, she don't do things the way Monique do things, and naturally. And she don't have that husband that she got. Now, that was a direct swing on her. Like, really? And in GQ magazine, when I tell you that Monique ate Miss Tiffany so quickly in between two swigs of her cocktail, she said, girl, what? You're right. You're nothing like me, and you don't do anything the way I do it. You don't have a husband. You don't have a husband. If you had the husband I have, maybe you'd not be having DUIs. Maybe you'd not 
be in a position where people are thinking that you're grooming young children. You would not have any of the problems that you're having. I said, girl, she just ate you, Tiffany. I said, now, Miss Tiffany, you got that one little nasty piece of dig, and it was a nasty little piece of dig, but she literally swept the floor with Tiffany. You know, Tiffany's hair is like platinum blonde. Baby, when Monique let Tiffany up off the floor, this whole side, baby, was black. How they were shit, just mopped the floor with her head. I said, so she ate Tiffany had a shep. Tiffany, Tiffany, trust me, I'm a good beefer. I know how to beef down here on this these internet streets. Girl, don't respond. Don't respond, Tiffany. Just let it fly. <laughs> just, just let that fly, sis. Don't come back at her, girl. You... It's in your best interest to just leave it alone, girl. She didn't even finish her drink on you, girl. She let you have it. I said, girl, no, ma'am. Tore up. Now, after that happened, D.L. Hughley, we know the D.L. Hughley situation with her. I knew they would talk about that and how they didn't get along and this, that thing and the other. And then we found out there was some situation with a cease and desist and all of this. And the whole thing, she went on D.L. Hughley's show. D.L. Hughley wasn't there. Is that all started. D.L. Hughley, his team did a game of Would You Rather? And this right here was so late and so shady to do to anyone who is a guest that you actually supposedly like because you know they called herself sister and brother and all that stuff. That question was so out of order. They asked, and I mean the game, Dale Hughley to his his credit, they all do do that. How you using my stuff on her? <laughs> 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 Here we go. Magic Room Mermaid said, baby, she cleaned her up. <laughs> she sure did. She sure did. But D.L. Hughley, um, would you rather? It's fun. You know, it, it's you know, it's a fun little game and it throw you off. But the question was rude because people have actually talked about her husband's sexuality. They've taken digs at their sexuality. So the question was just downright nasty. It really, really was. It was downright nasty to say, would you rather, would you rather sleep with, have your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom, who is a, a friend of theirs, a personal friend of theirs. So why would you want your husband to sleep with Lee Daniels, period? And Lee Daniels is a man. And Sydney ain't never told y'all that he was gay, bisexual, or anything like that, pansexual. He ain't told y'all he want no man. So that was completely out of order anyway for some friend of mine to be questioning my husband's sexuality. Rude. It was rude and it was unnecessary. It was out of order. And then they said, or would you prefer him sleep with Corinne Steffens without a condom? Corinne Steffens, for those of you who might not remember, that's superhead. She's basically supposedly like giving head to every person that's ever done a rap video. Who would want their husband sleeping with her? So, really? It was rude. It was disrespectful. It was, it just wasn't right. And she got off of the, the line with them called DL and she said basically that DL <laughs> see here you go right here bam glad you said it not me hey Tony um it was horrible and then he was dismissive now he ends up because DL Hughley now they talk about Sydney but D.L. Hughley 
is quite quick and zesty on on the trigger finger he will hit that damn button on the internet and get to read like me so i mean you know he claims that he was not snappy with her when she called he claims that he was not dismissive i don't believe you dl and i like dl Hugley, but i don't believe you sweetheart because when you responded here today after it's been years since this stuff happened dl Hughley, you responded snappy zesty <laughs> and quickly and quickly see i was supposed to do this video earlier today i didn't even know folks was coming back at her i had to hold up i said whoa hold on and when i tell you the way that monique cleared tiffany haddish dl hughley cleared monique and sydney i said oh listen i don't think i could have did it better myself baby he got on here and dragged monique and sydney he dragged Miss Monique for everything she was worth. Told her, why you all think she's always in some shit? Because don't nobody fool with her. She talking about she love us for real. How do you love us for real when don't nobody love you for real? Your kids don't fool with you. Your family don't fool with you. I said, what? He dragged Monique. I said, well, this shit just got good. Because I knew Monique reads like an old nasty piece of queen from back in the day. So I knew she was getting ready to come in like a house mother and let them have it. So I was just waiting. I crossed my legs and I said, my people got to wait because I know there's another video. But he dragged Monique. He gave Tiffany, get up, baby. I got this. Got my girl right the hell together. Told her there's an old saying. You, you don't have to pay for love, but you do. I said, oh. Nasty. It was just nasty. I said, oh, I could have did it better myself. He ran her down. Sorry, Monique, girl, not sorry. He got you, uh, sis. He got you. Talked about her bad. Talked about her bad everything all of it her being blackballed he read her like an old nasty queen he did he did so while your people was trying to be talk about uh sydney was zesty you was pretty zesty today like a bar of zestfully clean out of you let our girl have it i said okay all right but i was waiting on her i said she gonna get him honey she gonna get him so the next thing that happened was the breakfast club hi Burbert. The breakfast club happened. Now, you know, there was some issues with the breakfast club because Monique got in her feelings back when Charlemagne called, <laughs> called her as the donkey of the day. <laughs> okay. He gave her here <laughs> her donkey of the day. She ain't like that shit. So she took it right to his chin and asked him. She waited till she got, see, she's all... I told you, Monique reads like an old mother. And she waited till she got on the show and asked him in his face, would you call your wife a donkey? Would you call your mother a donkey? So when your mother and your wife say things that you don't really agree with, you don't call them a donkey? Then, Leonard, you don't call me a donkey. I let his ass have it in his face. I said, okay. So after all of this happened this morning, they they go live, they do their thing. And this is where the Jess Hilarious stuff comes in. So Jess Hilarious wasn't here for none of that bullshit. She came straight in and gave them, y'all was wrong then. It wasn't really cool. I don't see it for it. But here's the coverage. And they let Jess cover it for whatever reason. Just saying what she had to say to them, it was like they had this aha moment. And they did the segment and all of that. And when it all got done and said, 
Charlemagne did something that nobody would have ever thought he would do. Charlemagne actually apologized to Monique. Apologized about the whole thing. DJ Envy apologized. And he gave himself the donkey today. That was just, you know, just for shits and giggles. But it was a really sincere apology from Charlemagne. You know, Charlemagne can be a full on asshole, but he gave her an apology. And I was like, wow. So that's why I said these shifts and these turns. I'm like, wow. So I said, oh, that kind of that kind of hit. I said, OK. Then I said, I'm still waiting, though, because the way that D.L. Hughley put his foot in Monique's back, I said, mm -mm, mm -mm. So then I finally seen it. Here come Monique and Sydney back on the little couch sitting together. Hey, mama. Hey, daddy. I said, oh, here we go. And I was waiting on her to do a old nasty read. But here's the thing. She did one of my numbers. It was a nasty read. But that nasty little Monique kind of, she had done thought it out. And she came in. She read the shit out of D.L. Hughley, but she didn't go see. I thought she was going to go straight to hell on him. She didn't. She came in and, as Rick says, read him with the facts of his life. And I said, there is no comeback. I gave him the same thing. I said, D.L., don't push the button again. Just let it go. She literally Read D.L. Hughley down to the boards in the floor using his own words against him. Everything that he has said, because see, he led out with, she's a liar, and it wasn't this, and it wasn't that. But all in where he was reading her, we were caught up in the reads and how he was putting things and how he was dragging her. But there was holes all in the story the way he was telling it, holes all in the story. She did this and she did that. And she talked about my wife and she talked about my daughter. She came for my daughter and my wife. She said, I never came for your wife. I never came for your wife. I said that I would hate to have to be your wife because how does she suck your... knowing that you're the coward that you are. And she said very politely, that wasn't me coming for your wife, dear. That was me coming for you. And you know it. You're not that slow. You knew it wasn't me coming for your wife. See, that was you throwing it at your wife. You took your wife and threw her under the bus. You just gave it to her. But you knew it was for you because you are the coward that I said you were. I said, bingo, she let his ass have it. And that's absolutely it. And people do it all the time. You'll say something about the way they parent and they'll swear you're dragging their kid. Nobody ever said anything about the child. I'm talking about your piss poor ass. If I say you don't have lunch money for your baby or I say your child is dressed not correctly. I'm not coming for your kid. I'm talking to you. Your kid doesn't buy their own clothes. Your kid doesn't bring their own lunch money to school. That's you. The baby can't eat. That's you. And that's what she gave him, which is a nasty, see, only a seasoned, seasoned reader knows how to flip that switch and use your shit back on you. And she did flipped it back, gave it all to him, all of it. Even when she, somebody wrote something about the sunglasses, well, she said, you came up there with, you said it with your sunglasses on. Baby, that was given very much of you zesty little punk. <laughs> she, she was letting him have it. Told him the whole thing I said about with your daughter, I never came for your daughter. I would never hurt your daughter. I would never say anything to hurt your daughter. But all I was doing was pointing out that you didn't protect your daughter and that I understood it because I was violated 
and my father did the same thing. He didn't protect me before, during, or after either because he was a coward like you're a coward. I wasn't coming for your daughter. I was coming for you. I said, Psh. Monique cleared him, cleared him. And it was done so nice and so nasty. There is no comeback. D.L. Hughley, I am begging you, do not push the button. Just leave it alone. She left you, look, and then they told you they love you. We love you. And anytime after she called you 5011 cowards, she then offered you. And anytime you're ready to sit down with me and my husband, you can do so. Now, only way you can get back if you want to move forward is to go on ahead to sit down with her and her husband. And either you could clear it up or you could really show your ass when y'all have that sit down. But to try to cut, there ain't no comeback, boo. Ain't no comeback. Ain't none. Ain't none. Because the whole read that you have, she literally turned it on the side and walked you like a dog. <sighs> anyway, listen, I told y'all I wasn't going to keep y'all long. James, I want to hear your view on Cat Got Praised by Monique. Um, Wait, let me see. Okay, James, I want to hear your view on Cat Got Praised, but Monique is getting criticized for basically doing the same thing. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Rick. I'm a black man, just like you're a black man. But you and I both will have to be very honest. Are black women treated the same way that black men are treated? No. Don't we do? It's, it's just that same old double double standard. If Kat could have cussed and said all the stuff, if she would have said the same words, they would have said, oh, her mouth is just so nasty saying the exact same thing. It's that same old double standard, I think. I really do. I think it's the same old double standard. It's because she is female. She is female and cats are male. Sad but true. Sad but true. And I'm not going to sit here just because I am male and act like it's not. It is what it is. I got to tell the truth. I got to stand on what is the truth. A lot of th this whole thing, and, and I'm telling you, I literally got all choked up after they got done reading and dragging and carrying on. Just the stuff. That's why I said I think I seen them for the first time. I just seen them. The stuff they were saying about the community and, and just the whole dynamic of the man and the woman and all that. It choked me up and, and I, I was just listening to him. I just took me out of it all together because again, I am homosexual. So it is what it is, but I just took me out of it into what, what is what and what we're looking at and how they've been treated and how they've been handled and that kind of thing. And I really did get choked up. I'm like, how are y'all giving her all this, this smoke for having someone who loves her enough to, to say, you know, because we always want the black man to tell the black woman, okay, boo, be quiet, let me handle. No, that's not always the way. Every relationship doesn't look the same. Some women got to be free to say their shit. And he lets her say her shit. And he backs her. And then sometimes he goes and he brings it in certain rooms where I think he don't feel like it would go, you know what I mean? Where she would always be, it's the angry black woman. Here come the angry black woman. So he'll take those hits. I think they're very smart in their choices of where they move and how they move, but they always move together. That's the one, th they always move together. And I had to literally just sit back and just say, okay, let me see what this is. And again, take me and my feelings about whatever they got going on and just listen to what they're saying. And that's what I did. That's what I did. And I came out with a different result than I usually do. I, you know, do I think that some things that she said may not be true? Maybe, because again, 
Oh, a lot of this is perception. A lot of it's perception. There's some things that, you know, you felt a certain type of way. Maybe the person didn't even mean it that way. But if y'all ain't never had the conversation, then, you know. So, yeah, no, nothing's ever 100%. But goddamn her 95 was pretty good to me on this. So that's it. Like I said, I, I'm not going to hold y'all. Um, we didn't did an hour, an hour on this. This is what I gathered. This is what I gathered. This is how I felt. And like I said, I was on my way to my kitchen table quite a few times a day. And I said, hold on, hold on. And I don't think we're done. I think there's going to be more. I think there's going to be more. I do. I think there's going to be more. But I know who it shouldn't be. It's Tiffany Haddish and D.L. Hughley. Y'all just, just, let, just let it go. Let it go. But D.L. Hughley... Old DL, DL thought he had it in the bag. He really did. He thought he had it in the bag. And baby, I said, oh, she didn't came down here with a plan. And when he wasn't looking, baby, she got him, honey. She got him. So that's it. That's really all I got for y'all. I thank y'all for coming down to the kitchen table and hanging out with me. And listen, this has been Spill It Boy TV, Kitchen Table Talk Live. Um, I got people in here. Y'all are seeing a lot of my family members breeze through today, too. That's because we're streaming in Facebook as well as on YouTube. So that's why you're seeing my two crowds. Well, those two crowds, I have different crowds, and different social media spaces. But that's where you're seeing people coming together and some people that you haven't seen. And a lot of them are my actual family members and people from my actual life. So. Listen, it's always a good time for all my people to be together. But um, yeah, this is kind of how the uh, the D.L. Hughley and the Monique thing and how he thought he had won, it kind of looked like this. Just a little bit. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Listen, I'll see you all on the next one. Thank y'all for watching. I'll catch y'all later. And, and feel like